Yeah, thanks everyone for being here today. I really appreciate it. I did have a chance to watch the, watch the film, had a chance to do that uh, th that night. Some of the uh, big picture you know, op observations, um, it was, uh, I, had a, I had one person say to me after the game, uh, someone who was observing the game said it looked like, it looked like uh, JV versus varsity out there. And um, so what, I, what we did is we showed, we showed our players um, when it didn't look like JV versus varsity in the game. And there was plays in the game, offense, defense, and special teams where it did not look that way. Uh, and, and you have to show them why. Okay, why were we able to win this down? Why were you able to make this play? Why were you able to win this one-on-one? -on -one? Why were we able to get yardage on this run? Uh, things like that. Um, why were we able to get pressure on the quarterback? Okay, those things. So show them why. And then we need consistency and performance. And then when we didn't win, the one-on-ones when we didn't execute, you have to also show why. And, that's, and, and, and then, um, and then, so how do you fix it? Well, then that's, you know, that's what we're doing right now. And there's, uh, we could talk all day about how you fix it, but that's what we're doing behind the scenes right now. So, um, you know, we did do some good things in the game, um, but not enough. We have to be able to offense, defense, and special teams. We need to be able to string several good plays together, several positive plays together in a row um, to be able to be successful. And that's what we haven't been able to do on a consistent basis. Um, obviously, Ohio State's got a really good team. They're very well coached. They have some good players. Um, and if you don't play well, uh, you're not going to get the result that you need. Um, you know, Jaden Mangum, he was back on the sideline um, you know, during the game. He was in the locker room after the game. Um, and then you know, he's obviously he's back with us, um, and he's progressing nicely. So that was, that was the good news. I'm looking forward to the game this week. Um, our preparation uh, was good this morning, and I expect it to be the same way for the rest of the week. Um, but we are uh, looking to uh, fix some of the problems that we, all of the problems that we have. And so, um, you know, that's our job. I told the players uh, before, and I told them again this morning, I will never throw you Okay, or a coach or any staff member under the bus publicly. I'll never do that. Okay? Um, and however, behind closed doors in our space, we have to make sure we hold each other accountable. And we're doing that. So with that, I'll open up for questions. Um, <clears throat> it looked like Xavier Henderson and Slade were out on the field before the game in uniform warming up. I was wondering what did that mean to have them uh, back around the team on the field, and what does that mean for their uh, recovery going forward? You said Xavier and who else? Uh, it's Jacob Slade. Yep, they warmed up with us, um, and they're getting closer um, to getting back. And so we'll continue to uh, monitor their progress. They're doing everything they can to get back, and they'll be ready when they're ready. Now, I'm wondering, coming out of a game like that um, against a team that has such depth and depth of talent. What are the positives that can go forward in terms of knowing how to play with toughness and physicality at, mm -hmm. at that level? Mm -hmm. Well, um, like I just pointed out, we show the players uh, the plays where we, where we were able to win our one-on-ones, where we, able, we were able to be successful and efficient you know, defensively, offensively on special teams, like where we were able to make plays. And you show them that, and, and like I told them this morning, that's the team, that's the team that we believe in. That's the team that we, that we know that we can be. Like I said at the beginning of the season, before the season started, someone said, well, what is, what is uh, you know, what are your goals for the team? I said, after we stayed, you know, the stated goals of, you know, our goals to win every game on the schedule, you know, beyond that, the goal is for us to reach our full potential as a football team. That's always the goal every year. And so um, you see that hey, here's, here's good players. We're playing against good players. We have good players. We're winning here. Okay? 
So that's what we're capable of doing, but we're inconsistent. And so that should be encouraging um, when you see, when someone sees that. And so we're pointing out those things and we're, it's not just, a, it's not just enough to see that it's being done properly, but understand why, you know? And so that's what we're doing. As a follow to that, you know, the physical component, the physicality that needs to go mm -hmm. at that level is, I mean, when you play elite teams, is there muscle memory that comes farther down the line that says, okay, team X hit us this hard, we gotta hit team Y this hard to be competitive? Yeah, um, I'm not sure if I exactly um, know what you're asking, but you know, um, anytime you play a good team, it's gonna be extremely physical, okay? And in order for you to be able to win the one-on-ones, um, you have to be more physical. And so, um, you, know, that's, you know, that's what it is. Mel in the front here. I was wondering, you know, six games in the season, you're at the yeah. midway point. Where do you see your team at now compared to where you thought you would be coming into the year? Yeah, well, I see our team preparing for the next game because that's the only thing that matters right now for us. That's it. This next game, Wisconsin, home game, Woodshed, homecoming, national TV, that's the only thing that matters. That's what, that's what I see. It. That's a narrow focus uh, for myself. That's a narrow focus for our team. Mel, I know you had a lot of other things to look at Saturday afternoon, but when you're standing on the sideline and you gaze across to the east and all you see is scarlet mm -hmm. in the second half and you hear the OHIO, what's going through your mind and what do you say to the fans that left? Um, I really, myself, I really actually don't notice that because I'm dialed into the, into the, into the game. Um, it may be like it's being brought to my attention now, maybe after the game. So. Um, you want to know how I feel about it, like personally, like when you're telling me about this and you're bringing it up, because I'm not really paying attention to that during the game. Um, so, like, quite frankly, I don't, I don't, I don't have an expectation of unconditional support from anyone in my life, period. Maybe a handful of people. Like from, a, from human beings, I don't expect unconditional support from anyone. There may be, I might be able to count on one hand how many people that, I'm, that I may expect that from, and that's it. So um, that's not an expectation that I have, you know, unconditional support, like from anyone ever. So like including like my dogs, like PJ and KJ. I mean, like, you know, dog is man's best friend, right? Like, win or tie. <laughs> That's when dog is your best friend, win or tie. I come home, you know, and we don't play well. I mean, like, KJ and PJ, you're looking at me like, really? Is that, I mean, is that it? If I don't get mad at them, <laughs> and I'm still going to feed them. I mean, it's like, what do you expect? So... I mean, that's how I feel about it. It's not, I mean, how else am I supposed to feel about it? I'd be like, like, what do I say to the fans? I mean, you know, we need to play better football so you can, so you can be proud and so that um, it's the brand, of, the brand of football out there that you expect. And then, you know, we'll get more of what we want from our fans. Is that what you mean when you've said it's performance-based business and kind of you get what you deserve with that? Well, I mean, it is a performance-based business. It's a, it's a production business. And it is a business. And so, but again, I don't expect unconditional support from anyone, ever. That's not an expectation that I do have. There's no reason to think like that. In my, in my mind, it may be different for others. And I haven't coached anywhere, anywhere, college or pro, where there's been unconditional support. I have not coached anywhere, whether it's here in 97, 98, or mine of Ohio, or LSU, or Ohio State, or Cleveland Browns, Jacksonville, Chicago, Alabama, Georgia, Colorado, here. I've never coached anywhere 
anywhere where there's been unconditional support. So why would I expect that? Mel, uh, we talked about you know, Paul Chris' situation a week or so ago or whatever. With them having an interim coach, we've seen before, you know, that can sort of give a team a bump, a spark a little bit for maybe it's temporary. It seems like maybe they have that going. Wisconsin has that going with how they played last week. Is that just something? Is there any way to guard against that? Is that something that you sort of mentioned to the players? Like this is a team that is really motivated right now to try to try to do some things. I don't know if there's any way to, to guard against that at all, but is that a, something that you're thinking about this week? Well, I mentioned it to them this morning because we show them, we always show them the, the team's record. You know, we show them some stats for the last few games. And I said, hey, after this game, the coach was let go, and this was, these were the results for the, the following game. You know, so it's not going to get any easier. The easy bus is not coming. Mel, there were over here. Uh, the, obviously, the offensive line had some trouble on on, um, on Saturday, and I'm wondering how. I, I've just never seen a successful offense when you're not winning up front, and I'm just wondering how you get around that, and when that sometimes going to be your reality. Yeah, well, it's uh, we do have to win up front, and um, when you look at the coach's copy and you know what players are called, um, you know sometimes it looks like it's the front. Uh, and it is, and sometimes it looks like the front, and it's not. You know, so you know it's a it's a collective effort to be efficient on those plays. You know, but obviously, yeah, we have to execute better um, to get what we want. You know, and someone asked me about the run game. So, like, the vast majority of uh, the runs that we um, that we call and run are efficient this season. The vast majority, um, you know, we do have we do have quite a, we do have players that everyone does in college football now that uh, it's a run pass option and it, it's based upon what you see if you actually hand the ball off or do you you know throw the the pass option and so um, you know maybe we may need to call more we may call more runs that are just call it and run it um, but. You know, when you talk about complimentary football, um, when, you, uh, when you're down a significant amount of points in the second half, you know, calling and running is not much of an option. You know, and that's been our case. But when you look at when we actually do hand the ball off, um, you know, when we look at our self-scout, um, the vast majority of our runs are efficient. You can actually see that in this, in this past game. When we did hand the ball off, how many yards were we able to get? And every run is not efficient, obviously. Just like we had several tackles for loss against against Ohio State, every run is not efficient. Um, but you know that's what our that's what the self scout says. You know, so complimentary football has something to do, that, do with that as well. You know, team game. Uh, getting back to the Wisconsin situation, that's obviously one you're in yourself in Jacksonville, being an interim head coach. I was wondering what kind of dynamic that has in season when you have a new lead voice in the room and, and kind of the effect that can have on a team. Yeah, every situation is different, you know. So I don't know, I don't know their situation, so I can't really speak to it. You're going to be going up against another pretty good quarterback in Graham Mertz. So what have you yeah. noticed about him on film that maybe could give your defense some problems? Yeah, well, the, um, the thing I noticed about him is, so he's got, he has experience and um, he has re really good command of the offense and the type of offense they run is uh, a lot of it's predicated, like the passing game is predicated on play action. He does a really nice job of ball handling and um, they, have a, they do a good job matching up the runs with the play action passes and when the ball comes out of his, comes out of his hand, it comes out very easily with uh, a lot of velocity and accuracy, you know, so um, he's got a really good arm talent and he's accurate and he's got really good poise. He's a he's a very good quarterback, very good. And we've seen a lot of good quarterbacks this season. And he's one of those guys. Well, you knew you knew that last year can't happen every year. Um, so I know you're looking forward, but what it, between the four straight losses and, and the injuries which you can't control, mm -hmm. where is your frustration level right now? Like at this point right yeah. now, my frustration level is, is not there because I'm focused on this game and it's practice. Frustration gets you nowhere. It's, it's all about you know action steps. 
you have to, you know, train. You have to. I train myself, and we have to train ourselves to focus on what's next because anger, frustration, all that stuff. How far can that actually take you when you know it's time to prepare for the next opponent? So, going into a meeting room, going onto a, the field with anger and frustration, okay, without action steps um, and solutions and plans and things like that, is basically just, you know, unprofessional. You know. What's wrong with what you see from their running back? I think he's like 10, 11th in the nation in rushing. I think Braylon Allen, just like the challenge he presents for you guys to go with Mertz. Yeah. Big, fast, run hard, runs hard. He's got really good vision. Um, he, he's looking for contact, but he can also make you miss, and they have a huge offensive line. Massive human beings, you know, but he's a, he's a, he's a really good back. You're not going to go, you're not, we're not going to play anyone uh, in this conference that doesn't have good running backs. And he's, he's one of those guys. He's a good back, good player, physical. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a load. Um, Justin White and Kendall Brooks, I mean, if, would you have ever thought that two former Division II guys would be your starting safeties? And the production that they had on Saturday with, I think, 21 tackles between them, mm -hmm. what has allowed them to make that jump and, and be effective? Yeah, I have, I have thought that they would be on the field. We talked about it in, in training camp. We have to prepare every guy. We're coaching every single player, including walk-ons, to be ready to go in the game. I've said that several times over and over and over again. We preach that to our players. You're only one play away. You know, you could be, you know, you're one play away, and next thing you know, you're a two. And then next thing you know, you're another play away, and next thing you know, you're starting. You know, and that's what, and that's because football is a game of, you know, injuries are part of the game. And football is a game of attrition. And some years you can go through and not have uh, very many in injuries, and sometimes you can go through the season and have a lot. And no one cares. It's about, you know, bottom line production. It's like in the spring, you know, we talked about spring ball where we had, you know, five offensive linemen and we took two, uh, two walk on defensive linemen and moved them over to the offensive line so we could practice in the spring. We had to modify our practices. That's, you know, that's what it takes. There's no one cares. You know, you have to get, prepare guys and get guys ready. So, you know, it's, ne it's next man up. Um, and so, you know, prepare guys, develop guys. Some of it is on the job training. Okay, well, that's what it is, you know. And then we work to get better, you know, each and every day. You know, whether it's on the defensive line injuries or at linebacker or in the secondary, it doesn't matter, you know. But we've, we've worked really hard to coach every guy you know, in spring ball, in the summer, in camp, to be prepared to step on the field and play winning football for us. You know, and it does matter who's out there. Okay, so the guys that are out there, have, we have to get we have to get them ready to produce. And because at the end of the day, that's the only thing that matters. As a follow to that, how do how do the how do guys fall through the cracks with the way that scouting has gone, where where a guy from Division Two can come in? and elevate and what have those two individually done to kind of put their their footprint on on their roles how do guys fall fall through the cracks yeah, yeah you know that's you know, that's that's tough to say that's a that might be a discussion for for a later time um you know but the bottom line is that they're here um and you know everyone on our team gets coached you know um and so uh, those guys, those players in particular, have been getting reps okay, since spring practice and even going back to last season. If you can remember last season, you, I can, you can remember Justin White coming off the edge and affecting the quarterback in a big game. So it's not like, you know, that has, we haven't been in this situation before. You know, that's, that's part of it. it was, we had instances of that a year ago, a year before. You know, and it will always be like that, you know, and that's why um, we have to prepare uh, every single guy 
um, to be ready to play as best we can with the limited amount of reps that we're able to give guys in practice. You know, so a lot of his mental reps and uh, you know, inexperience and things like that. You know, gaining confidence and having the discipline to do to do your job on a consistent basis. You know, that's that's what it that's what it comes down to. So. Um, that's football. That's football. No, I know you got a lot uh, that you're focused on right now, and you know I know coaching probably takes some of those feelings away. But just being a Wisconsin graduate and playing, coaching against them for the first time, do you think seeing them out on the field, that helmet, those uniforms, will that bring any sentimentality out for you? And do you have any stories or memories, particularly, of coming to this building to play as a player? Uh, no, it doesn't. Um, at this point, it, it doesn't. That doesn't really factor into what I'm doing day to day, or whatever. So it's just a different, it's just a different mindset for me, you know, as a coach. You know, when you're preparing a team and things like that, you know, it's standard over feelings. Like what needs to be done. It's not about emotion or any of that you know, reminiscing or anything like that. As a there's a time and a place for that, but you know, not you know, not right now. It doesn't it doesn't factor in. Right here, Milt. I'm, I'm just wondering about the um, uh, the kicking game in particular in special mm -hmm. teams. And obviously Hank was out as yeah. the long snapper, but yeah. gone back and forth on kickers a little bit, still not seeing mm -hmm. the success yeah. you want. Is this something where you just kind of keep trying guys in game? I mean, obviously you're evaluating them during the week too, but how, how are you approaching this with the kickers? Yeah, um, you know, Donovan, Donovan did a really nice job stepping in, you know, last minute and being pressed into duty. He wasn't expecting to start that game. It was our long snapper? He did a did a nice job in there. Um, yeah, so uh, you know we've uh, we've identified some things, um, you know, behind the scenes in our you know in our operation that um, you know some that we think are going to help our situation. So we're working on those things right now. Just to follow up, clarify on the young man that went down Langham. Does he, I know he's bad. Does he have a football future, Langham? Yeah, whoever went down. Does he have a football future? Does he have a fo football yeah, future? Yeah, is there anything long term? Is he, is he going to be able to play football? Uh, you know, he's, he, he, you know he's, he's progressing nicely. You know, um, I haven't, I don't have any information about, you know, anything that will be career ending. Pardon me. You don't know yet. I don't have a reason to think that it, that, that is the case. You talking about Jaden? Yeah. Okay. Well, we saw Terry Lockett's no longer with the team. I was wondering if you had anything you could say about that. And then also, with the being the transfer portal windows, where you've guys that maybe they're not happy with their role, or you know, for whatever reason, they're looking elsewhere. How you handle that? In season now, given that they can't really enter the portal and be eligible at their next school immediately. Yeah, I mean, so if a kid enters the portal, or if he, you know, if he doesn't, if he's not with us, then he, you know he's not with us, and we'll do everything we can to help him land somewhere else. That's how we've handled it, whether it's in season, out of season. That's that's not something that's not that's something that's new. It's it's been like that, you know, year one, year two as well. All right, thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Appreciate you covering our team. Thank you.